Lego Man, do you want to go out there and start a war? Because with this video topic, that is exactly what you're going to be doing, man. What are you thinking? Talking about this Carey Price, Chris Kreider thing here on the YouTube channel. There is no reason to go out there and put your fans against each other, man. And I have a good reason to talk about this today. I definitely do think this is a lot more valid than just bringing it up out of nowhere to get my fans to fight with each other. But the reason we're talking about the Rangers and the Canadians today is because of an interview that Bob Hartley had done on, what is this website, bpmsports.ca? There will be a link in the description if you want to go ahead and listen to the video interview that was done with Bob Hartley, former NHL coach, KHL guy. We all kind of know Hartley's role in the NHL lore, I guess. But he did indeed do this interview on September 9th, so three days ago, talking about Carey Price's career as a Montreal Canadien. And yeah, this is exactly it, man. This is all we're pulling from. It's a Bob Hartley quote that sparked this entire conversation and this entire video topic over here, because even in the thumbnail of the interview, you could see there is the quote right here that makes this video topic possible. However, it's in French, and I suck at French. It's been... What was it, like four years since I've actually studied French in high school? So we're going over on to ForeverBlueShirts.com because they translated the quote and put it here for all of us to read. Although he would never admit it, Bob Hartley said, Chris Kreider has put the brakes on Carey Price's incredible career. And boy, oh boy, is that a can of worms. If you're not up to date with your Canadians and Rangers lore, there's a reason why Habs fans repeatedly go out there and express their dislike for Chris Kreider every time the guy's name is mentioned. Now, is it justified? I'm not sure. You can tell me in the comments all your thoughts and opinions about that, because I'm sure that will create some very civil discussion. But let's just go over everything that happened in 2014, why Bob Hartley said that Chris Kreider might have been the guy who ended Carey Price's career. It's a very dramatic statement, I do think, but it is one that I do understand where Hartley is coming from here. In 2013-14, Carey Price was an absolute beast. The guy had a 927 save percentage in 59 games played, had a 232 goals against, and a pretty good winning record as well. In that same year's Olympic Games performance in Sochi, he put up a 9-7-2 save percentage in five games. He was incredible, and I get it, the Canadian team was so gosh darn good in that season, like it was arguably the best hockey team ever assembled, period. Dowdy, Keith, Weber, Crosby, Taves, Price, everybody, you name it, it was a great team. Carey Price just happened to have the numbers to justify that sort of conversation about it, but... In the postseason, his entire run was cut short. You see, the Canadians made the third round in the Stanley Cup Finals, but when they went up against the New York Rangers in Game 1, things took a turn for the worst, when one Chris Kreider was chasing a loose puck in the neutral zone. It was a few minutes into the second period and the puck was in front of the Canadians' bench. Kreider is the first one to the puck. He kind of dangles it, one hand windmills it by Alexi Emlund, and he breaks into the zone chasing after the puck because, you know, when you one hand windmill it, you kind of have to pick it back up, right? And as he comes in towards the goal, Emlund comes back into the play, he falls forward and whacks at Kreider and his legs. Kreider, while still trying to get the shot off, ends up falling in a very weird way. Like, normally when you get slashed, your feet fall backwards in the direction of the follow-through of the stick that slashed you, right? But Kreider, he still has his balance for a split second. He ends up falling and kicking his legs out in the process, injuring Carey Price as he barrels in, skate first, into Price's pads. Now, he was also kind of trying to take a shot at the same time, which is sort of why the weight shift happened the way it did, where all of a sudden he's on his back and Carey Price was taken out of the game. Peter Budai had to come in. Michelle Terrian was so frustrated at Kreider saying it was a malicious thing. Henrik Lundqvist came back at the other side and said, no, it was an accident. And you have Rangers and Canadians fans debating to this day whether or not Kreider is the Antichrist because he took out Carey Price at his knee. The thing is, though, when it comes to the idea of Carey Price's career being ended by Chris Kreider, there are a few layers you have to discuss before coming to your conclusion. First off, I get it, this happened eight years ago, so some Rangers fans would say, hey, what the hell is he talking about? Not only did Carey Price play for eight seasons after this Chris Kreider thing, but he also posted up one of the best goaltending performances we had seen in the NHL in its history the next season after coming back from the Kreider injury in 2014-15. That was the season where he had the 196 goals against, the 933 save percentage, and 66 games. 
and he won the Hart and Lindsay Awards, which is difficult for a goaltender to go out there and win. So what the hell is Bob Hartley talking about when he says that Kreider ended Price's career? Well, it's been no secret that Carey Price has had knee problems over the past few years and a bit. He's had to take some time off here and there because there's always been some re-aggravation of his knee, and it's sort of satire, sort of a joke, but sort of real at the very same time. Every time Carey Price gets taken out of action, and it's always, oh, he has re-aggravated knee problems, you'll always see Canadians fans going out there and saying, screw Chris Kreider, man, it's all Chris Kreider's fault. Because sure, even though Carey Price had himself a pretty good career after the Kreider hit, there are still long-lasting effects that take hold with those knee problems, and even though they come up once in a while, those still are pretty much traced back to the source of the Kreider hit in 2014. Now, there are semantics and people going out there debating, oh, but it's Emlyn's fault. He tripped Kreider, and Kreider fell into Price because he went out there and got tripped. There are other people saying, no, it's Kreider maliciously going out there. And I think there are many things that we can agree on, even though there may be some disagreements on Emlyn and Kreider and the fault, who's at 100% fault here and there. Was Kreider recklessly going about into the crease? I'd probably say so. He's a hard-nosed player. He also, in this same season, I believe, went out there and took out, who was it, like, Freddie Anderson? Or was it Craig Anderson? My goodness, I completely forgot. And I believe there was, like, Flurry in there, too. Chris Kreider has definitely had his fair share of running into goaltender highlights that has made its way around the NHL and its fan bases. So for all the Rangers fans trying to paint a picture that Chris Kreider is an absolute saint and he does nothing wrong... It's difficult to go out there with my heart of hearts and believe that 110%, but of course, he's your guy, he scored 50 goals for you, of course you're gonna go out there and defend him, what am I expecting here? Obviously, I don't blame people for getting defensive about favorite players on their own favorite teams, but this was a very interesting conversation to be bringing up, especially with all the Carey Price drama that has been going on the past few weeks. The fact that he is now on the off-season LTIR, and the fact that... Pretty much, as we talked about in the previous video, his career might just be done. Like, done, done. And I know, the rehab, the time he took off in 2021, 2022, not all of that can be chalked up to knee problems. There were some personal things that he had to deal with himself, which is definitely good that he was able to go out there and work on those things. It's just, the knee problems, man, they keep on coming back, and this was probably the most pivotal moment in that entire timeline when you take a look at the Kreider, Emlyn, Price thing back in 2014. You had yourselves, what was it, like, Tokarski coming in and playing the rest of the season? Not the season, the series, and the Canadians lost. The Rangers made it to the finals, and they lost to the Kings, I believe. And so, this was definitely, like, a huge turning point, because I even remember, like, as a Canucks fan, just watching the playoffs, being like, oh yeah, look at the Canadians, they're doing so well. Carey Price is such a beast, he is amazing, and then boom, he's out, and now it's Tokarski, and he has to come in here and do the thing. Was it Tokarski or was it Fukali? My goodness, I can't remember. They have similar names, too. Fukali, Tokarski? Aye, aye, aye. My thoughts, though, are with Carey Price, and of course, we all kind of wish that he would have had a better send-off in the NHL than having one win in 2021-2022, but what are you gonna do? These things happen. Links will be in the description if you want to go ahead and listen to the Bob Hartley interview where he talks about the Carey Price, Chris Kreider thing in French. There also will be a link in the description to the Forever Blue Shirts article where we pulled the English quote from. There is a bigger analysis done on the entire 2014 story in this piece, but I'll leave a link in the description if you want to go ahead and read that yourself. But talk to the console your thoughts about Carey Price, Chris Kreider, the hit, the shenanigans in 2014, and what long-lasting effects might have been there for Carey Price and his career as a result. My one request is to just please try not to go out there and flame anybody whose fan base alignment disagrees with yours because, you know, there are going to be a lot of Canadians fans calling out Rangers fans in the comments saying, no, that's not right, it's this, or... Vice versa, Rangers fans saying, no, but Emmeline tripped him, and this and that, I don't really want this to become a flame war, but you know, I wouldn't be all too surprised if it did. Just try to keep things a little bit more civil than we're used to seeing. Please, that's my one request. Talk to the council your thoughts, I hope you enjoyed this Vishraj Rolls 99, and bye. <laughs>